up guys, this is James Baber, got a quick tutorial today, as you can see right here um, in the viewport, got some uh, physics going on with some cubes and stuff, uh, what you're seeing right there is the new rigid body system that they just implemented into Blender, um, the 2.66 release just came out a couple days ago, and this is one of the new features, is the rigid body physics, and I thought I'd just give you all a brief introduction to it, and um, yeah, so let's get into it. First of all, you're going to need to download the new um, version of Blender. So you're going to have to go to uh, blender.org, type it in your URL, alright so we're going to go right down here to the download Blender button. Select that. It's going to hop you to a screen with um, different operating systems. Just choose whatever uh, suits your operating system, download it and then you'll get a folder similar to you have a folder similar to this in your downloads it's going to say blender and it's going to have blender in there um, that's what you're going to open up so you're going to open it up um, before I, we hop into this tutorial let me show you real quick what the finished result of this tutorial is going to look like Alright, so this is the scene we'll be creating. Let's go ahead and hop into a new scene in Blender. So, um, just go ahead and you're just going to go ahead and open up um, Blender on on your computer. Um, so this is this is the default setup right here. Um, if you have a um, a keyboard that doesn't have a number pad and it's just got the numbers on the top of the uh, top of the keyboard. Um, what you need to do is you need to go over here to user preferences, select your user preferences, go to input, and then click emulate numpad. What that's going to do for you is it's going to um, it's going to allow you to switch angles from side view to camera view to front view, top view, etc. with just the the numbers on the top of your keyboard. What I'm going to enable right now is the keyboard. Uh, it's a screencast keys, and what that's going to let me do is it's going to um, let y'all see what buttons I'm clicking. And so, if you have any questions, I want to just push or stuff. You can just look at the screen, and you'll you'll see you'll see everything. Um, so let me just enable that real quick. Okay, what I'm just going to do is put this cursor right at the center. Shift S cursor to center. It's going to put it there. Um, what we're going to be doing is just going to be duplicating this cube. So what we're going to do, scale it down. You hit hold down S, or just hit S, scale down with the mouse. We're going to go over here to the modifiers panel, click on a modifier, add an array modifier. We're going to add three array modifiers, one for the X, one for the Y, and one for the Z. So this one's going to be our X. So what we're going to do is we're going to change, put the count to 10. Now it's going gonna, it's gonna to look a little stranger here, but it all makes sense in a second. Then we want to offset this by 1. Okay, so we can put some spacing in there. This one, we want to completely delete this right here. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to put 1.1 right here. That's going to put it on the y-axis. We're going to change this count to 10. And then this one right here, change the count to 10 also, but we're going to delete this again, Put uh, type in 0, and then we're going to type in 1.1, and this is going to put 10 of these on the z-axis. So there you got a nice little cube right there. So we're going to hit apply, which just um, applies this to the object, so it, this is what the normal object is going to look like. So if you hit tab to go into edit mode, you're going to see this object right here. Um, you know, not much. Now, we're going to take that. We're going to go over to the physics panel. And here's, you're going to notice two new buttons, if you're familiar with Blender at all. The, uh, these were just added in the 2.66 version. You're just going to select rigid body right here. It's going to be active. You're going to want it to be box. And then you're going to want to turn the friction up to one so that's so these are gonna have a lot of friction when they fall it's because you want them to slow down you don't want them just to keep going you know so you want to have complete friction all right now we're gonna go we're gonna hit shift a and we're gonna add a plane 
we're going to scale this plane up like this. This, we're also going to hit rigid body, also going to hit box, but, and we're going to put the friction up to one. But instead of active, we want passive. What, that, what uh, passive and active mean is passive means that it's not going to be really affected by gravity. Nothing really is going to change it. Active, it is going to be changed. Now, um, as you can see right here, this thing is not in the center where we want it. It's not in the center of the object, so it's hard to manipulate it and put it in the shape that we want it to, or, you know, rotate it in the, at the angle we want it to. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold Shift, Control, Alt, C, and then you're going to select Origin to Geometry. What that did right there is it took this origin point, put it right at the center of the object. Now what we're going to do is we're going to rotate this object on the x-axis by 45 degrees. We're going to rotate it on the y-axis by 45 degrees. So now when the object falls, it's got this nice point here, so it's going to make a nice spread and the, um, the blocks are just going to fly everywhere that way. Now, we want each of these individual objects we want each of these um, boxes right here to be individual objects. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go into edit mode, and then we're going to hit P, which is um, parent, which means um, you know you're just going to separate the objects, make them parents, which are their own individual objects, and you're going to do P by loose parts. As you can see, these aren't connected, so the computer is automatically once you click that, the computer is automatically going to know to separate these into individual objects just based on the fact that they're not touching each other. So we're going to go ahead and click that. It might take your computer um, longer or shorter depending on what your specs are. To mine I got 4 gigabytes of RAM and um, uh, you know Blender uses a lot of RAM as far as doing these physics and stuff like that. But right now as you can see you can select one of these you got your own, these are all uh, separate individual objects. So let's hit Alt A and see what the physics look like. So pretty crazy. Um, you can't really, you don't really know what's going on here. Like what's the deal here? And um, what the problem is right here is the origin point is set to the center of the object. So all of these all little objects have their center of gravity right in the middle even though they're um, you know they're way far away from the center of gravity. The center of gravity should be in the center of each individual object. And so how how we're going to do that? Hit escape to get out of the animation. What we're going to do is we're going to go up here. We're going to go hit one, and let's go ahead and put this hit five to put this in orthographic view. So we have this object. Like um, here, I'm just going to move this lamp real quick. Move this lamp out of the way. Okay, let's hit one, and um hit Z to go into the wireframe mode and what we're going to do is we're going to box select all these so select one of them hit B and that's going to bring this um, box select thing uh, option right here and you can select all these like right here and then we're going to do the exact same thing we did early, earlier we're going to do shift control alt C and then we're going to hit origin to geometry. So now you can see each little box has its center of gravity right in the middle of the object. So let's hit Z to get back into the solid mode or view and um, then let's hit Alt A and see what happens this time. So we got a nice nice little simulation here. Um, this is this is the result we're going for right here. Um, I mean it was pretty simple tutorial that's that's basically it I'm gonna show you real quick how to render this uh, export it from blender so you can watch it uh, with some better materials and stuff than this so go ahead and hit escape to get out of the animation we're gonna go we're gonna change this from blender render to cycles render now we're just gonna um, hit render render image just to get a preview of what um, this is gonna look like so you know looks good materials aren't bad. Um, we can uh, set our camera angle in a better position I guess so we'll get a better uh, view of this. Um, I'll just go ahead and hit escape. I don't have to see all that. Um, let's go over here. Grab your camera. Hit 7. Go to top view. Grab 
rotate and rotate hit zero to view from the camera um, that's not a bad angle right there you got the floor let's pull it out some grab on the X grab on the Y grab on the X yeah that's pretty good we'll pull it up some too there so if the thing is gonna fall down you see all the cubes smash and yeah so let's go ahead and render this this is your render panel. Let's turn this up to 100%, which is going to give us 100% quality. Um, this is going to give us 100% quality with the PNG image. And then we're going to go, uh, you can go to wherever. I'm just going to put this in, I guess, movies. Click create new file directory. We're going to call this cube rigid um, body. Uh, tutorial. Okay, now we're going to select that file, and you can just call each one of these images, you just call them cube, and accept. Now, we're going to go over here. These look good, 24 frames per second, good, good. And, um, you know, we're going to get 250 frames, this is the complete animation, so that's what we want. Go ahead and hit animation. And so here we are. Here's the final setup. Uh, my render uh, took quite a while. I rendered it overnight. Um, you know, uses up about two gigabytes of space. Um, so you just got to keep that in mind when you're rendering stuff like that. So we rendered it in PNG, which are images. So we're going to go to the folder that um, we put the images in real quick. And so here's here's a long list of images. This is an image sequence that we're going to compile in Blender um, for the movie. So let's go ahead and save this. I'll just do um, call it tutorial. You can call it whatever you want. Now I'm going to do file new. All right, now I'm just going to delete this cube, and um, by the way, you hit X, and then that's how you delete. Then we're going to go over, we're going to hold down Control, and then we're going to tap the side arrow until we get to this screen right here, which is the video sequence editor. And you're going to click Add, Image, then we're going to go to Movies, where our directory is going to hit A to select all these images, add image strip, grab with G, place right there, and yeah, there's our final animation, and it ends at frame 49, so we're going to go down here, and we're going to set the ending to 49, go ahead and hit your, hold down control, hit the side arrows again to get back to our original screen. 100%. Now this time we're going to change it to um, QuickTime. And the reason why we just didn't do this in the first place is if you render in images and your computer ever crashes, it's going to have the most recent frame rendered so that you can just, you know, set your starting. So say your computer crashed at frame 72. Well, you can just type in frame 73 and uh, it'll continue rendering the rest of the frames instead of I mean if you did a video file and it crashed then you just have to start the entire render all over again and I mean you don't want to do that especially if it's taken all night so um, we're gonna click we got it um, set an output for this we're just gonna click rigid body tutorial and then I'm just gonna name this cube movie And then we're just going to hit animation and export it. Alright, so that's it. Um, Blender just compiled the, the images into a single movie file. So we can uh, go ahead and close Blender. Then we can go down to QuickTime. Actually, let's just go to Finder. Movies. 
And here's our video right here. So let's see what the finished result looks like. So, I mean, as you can see, it's not bad. You know, it looks pretty good. You got some cubes falling around and, uh, you know, pretty good physics simulation right there. So you guys are probably thinking, like, you know, what is this good for? Like, how, how would I ever use this? Um, well, the rigid body system can have multiple uses. You know, right here are a couple examples. Um, he's using the, the shatter tool, which um, if you guys are interested, you can Google that. There's some tutorials on how to use the shatter tool and fracture objects like that. Um, but, you know, the rigid body physics can be used for multiple, multiple different purposes. I mean, that's the great thing about um, um, CGI is, like, you just create whatever you want to. You know, the sky is the limit. And, you know, he's, he's got some awesome stuff right here. You guys can check it, check out his full showreel on YouTube. Um, but for right now, I think that's all for me. So thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it.